Hello, I'm Arthur Bletchley and I'm a Chartered Valuation Surveyor and RICS Regulated Valuer with B Valued Limited in Cardiff, UK. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the new RICS Home Survey reports. I am, though, expecting a telephone call. The RICS, that's the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, introduced its Home Buyers Report over 20 years ago and later its Condition Survey and Building Survey. RICS changed the Home Buyers Report in late 2016 so you, the consumer or client, can opt whether to have a valuation. Six months ago, RICS published its Home Survey Standard, which will now come into effect at the end of 2020. When buying your home, you are likely to be looking for peace of mind as to whether there's anything wrong with it that may need significant expenditure on top of the purchase price and perhaps whether you're paying too much. So that's why you should instruct a chartered valuation surveyor to undertake a survey with or without a valuation. So, hi Avisha, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Arthur. How are you? Fine, thanks. Good. Um, the reason for my call was I was thinking of buying a new house. Um, it's on the internet, and my mum said I should ask you um, to have a look at it for me. Oh, I'd love to. Are you happy if I record this, please? That's fine, absolutely fine. Okay. Uh -huh. I have um, two uh, photos of it. Um, I think it was built in about 100 years ago. Um, I'm not sure what sort of survey I need. What would you recommend? The RICS um, have benchmarked three levels of survey. Um, level two, um, the Home Buyers Report, is the most popular. Both Level 1, the Condition Survey, and Level 2 have Traffic Light Rating System. So, Condition Rating 3, defects that are serious and or need to be repaired, replaced or investigated urgently. Condition Rating 2, defects that need repairing or replacing soon but are not considered to be either serious or urgent. The property must be maintained in the normal way. Condition rating one, no repair is currently needed. The property must be maintained in the normal way and of course not inspected. The condition rating report and home buyer report with or without evaluation are in standard formats and include the following. Introduction to the report, about the inspection, C, summary of the condition ratings and if it's a home buyer's report the overall opinion d about the property e outside the property so we're talking about the chimney the roof the rainwater goods the walls the windows doors conservatory or porches joinery balconies etc and then f inside the property attic ceilings walls floors fireplaces kitchen fittings woodwork bathroom fittings cellar g services electricity gas oil water heating water heating drainage common services h which includes shared areas for flats garages other outbuildings grounds boundaries I, issues for your legal advisors, and they of course don't visit, so we the surveyors are their eyes. J, risk to buildings, grounds, house, people, uh, housing, health and safety rating system. And I've done uh, specific training in that. K, the valuation, um, if it's a home buyer's report with a valuation. L, the surveyor's declaration. And then finally, uh, what to do now, such as get quotes from reliable contractors, a description of the service, 
and there's a house cut up diagram. The front, the front bay has been rebuilt. So here we've got a matrix and in the column two, we've got valuation, which is, of course, not a survey. Um, and these could include uh, mortgage valuations. Um, so B value does valuations, but not mortgage valuations. Um, and then in columns three, four and five, we've got level one, level two, level three, which is the RICS condition survey, the home buyers report with or without evaluation and uh, the building survey. Um, if you're having the valuation with level two, then that will include a, a rebuilding cost um, for insurance purposes. Um, now, B value does not do um, the level three uh, building surveys. Uh, so levels one, two and three, they inform you about the property's condition. Um, there's a traffic light um, system. Um, the three levels identify significant problems that could aid negotiations and they're all suitable for properties um, which are modern and in good order. Um, the condition rate, the, the, the level one survey is not suitable uh, for older properties um, and if the property is in poor order or one which you intend to alter you really ought to have a, a building survey. Um, you get advice regarding repairs with uh, the level two or level three survey. And um, you can speak to um, me, the surveyor, before or after inspection or indeed um, re receiving the report um, with those surveys. A side extension has been built near the back. <clears throat> now, service survey level one is for clients, buyers um, and sellers and owners seeking a professional and objective report on the condition of the property at an economic price. It is less comprehensive than either level two or three. No tests are undertaken. The report objectively describes the condition of the building, its services and grounds. It highlights relevant legal issues and any obvious risks. The report is succinct. It assesses the relative importance of defects and problems. If I was unable to reach a conclusion with, a reasonable, with reasonable confidence, I would recommend further investigation. Survey level two. These are the most popular surveys. They are also for clients seeking a professional opinion at an economic price. They are though less comprehensive than level three surveys. The focus is on assessing the general condition of the main elements of the property. This intermediate level of service includes a more extensive visual inspection of the building, its services and grounds than the level one survey, but still without tests. Concealed areas which are normally opened or used by the occupiers are inspected if it's safe to do so, e.g. roof spaces or cellars. The report objectively describes the condition of the different elements. It also provides an assessment of the relative importance of the defects or problems. I may recommend further investigation as with level one. Level two surveys suit a broader range of conventionally built properties than just modern ones in good order. I would not feel comfortable doing a level two survey on a property built prior to 1875. Here, a level three survey would be appropriate. If you're planning structural alterations, you should have a level three survey. The surveyor may be able to prepare your application for planning consent, building regulation approval, the party wall notices, etc. You should also have a level three survey if the property is neglected. I would normally feel comfortable doing a level two survey 
of a property that has been extended and or altered. I would though recommend that your legal advisor check that building regulation approval with a completion certificate was obtained by the current or previous owner or in default that they may be retrospectively obtained. You could obtain indemnity against the cost of compliance, but that would neither protect you from injury if the work is unsafe, nor when you try to sell, as your purchaser may pull out if the paperwork is not in place. I think future generations will look for safe houses. In level two survey reports, I may comment on the EPC, that's the Energy Performance Certificate, for example, if I think it has errors. So with E2 roof general, roofs will be inspected from the grounds or windows of the property adjoining public spaces. Those that cannot be seen in this manner will be inspected from a ladder if less than three metres above the ground, if it is safe to do so. Do you think you will be able to see all the roof? Right, windows. General, whatever the level of survey, windows are only open to where permission has been given and any keys or locks are available and are easy to operate without force or damage. Possessions and heavy curtains may restrict inspections. So level one, we inspect one window on each elevation. Level two, we include one on each elevation and one of each different w window where there's a variety. I'm worried the windows may not be escape windows. So the roof space. Right, generally, roof space is less than three metres above floor level would be inspected from a ladder if it is safe and reasonable to do so. However, thick layers of thermal insulation may restrict inspection. Insulation conceals joists, pipes, wiring, etc. In the case of flats, only those roof spaces accessible from the flat itself will be inspected. So in level one, secured access panels will not be removed. Insulation material, stored goods or other contents will not be lifted. Those parts of the roof structure, etc. that can be seen from the access will be inspected. In level two, in addition to that described for level one, the RICS member will enter the roof space and visually inspect the roof structure with attention paid to those parts vulnerable to deterioration and damage if it is safe and reasonable to do so. I'm worried that the party wall may not be complete, i.e. it might be a fire hazard. Floors. With level one, the surfaces of exposed floors will be inspected. Carpets, floor coverings or floorboards will not be lifted. Furniture will not be moved. Floors will be assessed for excessive deflection by a heel drop test. Hatches to voids below floors will not be lifted. And at level two, as with level one, but if subfloor voids are accessible, inverted head and shoulders inspections will be carried out. RICS members will not enter those areas. So G6, inspection chambers and underground drainage, generally. The design calculations of service installations or appliances will not be commented on, neither will be they tested. Inspection chamber covers in common areas of flats will not be lifted. You will be advised that further tests and inspections will be necessary unless the occupier provides evidence of recent installation or maintenance. So with level one, the RICS member will not lift inspection chamber covers to drains or septic tanks. But in level two, the RICS member will lift accessible inspection chamber covers to drains or septic tanks where it is safe to do so and without causing damage and visually inspect the chambers. Other services. General. 
i.e. all pipes and cable services including electrics, hot and cold water systems, heating, above ground drainage, ventilation services, renewable energy systems etc. The RICS member does not perform or comment on design calculations or test the service installations or appliances in any way. You will be advised that further tests and inspections will be necessary unless the occupier provides evidence of recent installation or maintenance. And with Level 1, the RICS member will inspect sample parts of the different service systems that can be seen. And with Level 2, the RICS member will inspect all parts of the service and systems that can be seen within the normal course of the inspection. It looked like an old consumer box. The grounds. General. Our ICS members will carry out a visual inspection of the grounds from within the boundaries of the subject property and, where necessary, from adjoining public property. Level 1. Our ICS members will carry out a cursory inspection of the grounds during a general walk round. The assessment should include external features relevant to the instruction and request from the client. And the inspection should also include the inside and outside of all permanent buildings not attached to the main dwelling where access is possible. And with level two, in addition to that described for level one, the RICS members should perform a thorough inspection of the grounds, noting any limitations. I take photographs and will make them available to you. Sometimes I use a pole camera. While I try to flag up the presence of any asbestos, I will not undertake an asbestos inspection, i.e. it will be outside the control of asbestos regulations 2012. A subsequent survey by a specialist may be required. If the property is leasehold, you will be referred to an annex. I think I'll go for the level two survey, the home buyer's report, with evaluation. Then please. Yes, I'd be pleased to help. Thanks. I look forward to hearing from you then. Bye. Bye. If you want to proceed, I will need to send you my conditions of engagement for your approval. I will then arrange to inspect the property. I think I could be there quite soon and I'd email you a link to your report a few days later. We could meet for a debrief at the end of my survey if the owner is agreeable. I'll invoice you after I've sent you the link to my report. So I look forward to hearing from you. Now the RICS Home Survey Standard is at that website. So as I say, I'm Arthur Bletchley and I'm a registered valuer with the RICS with Be Valued Limited in Cardiff UK. Um, there's my um, address, telephone number, email and if you think I can help you then I'd be very pleased to do so. Whatever happens, good luck.